Good afternoon, Mark Zutt of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, August 20th, 2017. What's going on in the tropics this afternoon? Well, it looks like Harvey may be trying to make a comeback, and that was not entirely, uh, you know, it wasn't like that was unheard of. This was predicted by uh, some of the computer models, the European specifically, and the National Hurricane Center certainly mentioned it in their wording. We have 92L over here. I don't know if this is 93L yet or not. It doesn't matter because it's probably not going to develop. And you notice a lack of anything out here. I'll show you why in just a moment. So let's look at the satellite animation for this afternoon. Here is Harvey increasing with convection and overall organization. Once again, some broad turning looking like it's going on somewhere in there. And the Hurricane Hunter Air Force Reserve plane is on its way out to see what's going on and as the hurricane center mentioned in their update at 2 p.m. Eastern Time the recon crew will give us a better assessment as to the structure of uh, what would you call this zombie Harvey whatever uh, but in all seriousness it could develop again and make its way towards the Central American coast here bringing rain uh, to parts of Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, Guatemala, the Yucatan itself, and even parts of Jamaica here, uh, some of this northern fringes, I talked about that yesterday, depending on what convective activity develops on the north side, you could get some squally weather there, so it'll be interesting to see how much rain falls in Jamaica. This is 92L, we'll certainly keep watching it, but no indications of development yet, and uh, this is just some kind of a coastal trough or something and is a real pain in the butt for what's going on tomorrow over here. I'll talk about that towards the end of the discussion in a moment. Now, look at that. <laughs> you can just forget any development for the next several days uh, in the eastern Atlantic. Dry. I, I have not seen a Saharan air layer outbreak like that this late into the season in quite some time that I can recall. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I just can't remember. I mean, that is very stable, dry Saharan air, warm air in the mid-levels more than likely. Particulate matter is just, whew. So you can forget any hurricanes for a while coming from the eastern Atlantic. If anything's going to develop, it's going to develop over in this area, and it'll be from existing systems or the pattern changing and forcing um, convergence and other processes to take place in the western Atlantic Basin. We're not going to have anything coming across and developing. That is for sure. Probably for the next week to ten days would be my guess right now. So a close-up of Harvey this afternoon. Still rather discombobulated, but you can see there's some broad turning right in here. And this is headed for Honduras and Nicaragua. And then if you look at Jamaica, looks like a little bit of thunderstorm activity on the west side. And more of that may be coming up from the southeast. So be prepared for that. Very heavy rainfall can occur with these systems despite their weakness in terms of wind. The vorticity signature for Harvey is very round in its appearance. So it's got that. Uh, there's 92L, also quite impressive. And then more of a, I don't even know what you would call that, a morphic shape. And then out here, just uh, forget it. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen uh, east of about 40 degrees longitude for quite some time. Uh, but this energy here, again, headed towards something like this maybe. And we're going to have to really watch what happens in the Bay of Campeche and how the models evolve. I am not 100% certain yet that South Texas escapes this completely. That doesn't mean I think that it's going to make landfall there, but there's still enough time between here and there for something to happen uh, with the steering dynamics of the over over North America, that it's not etched in stone yet, that this does not affect Texas somehow. But we can watch that uh, over the coming days and prepare accordingly. Looking at the upper level winds, fairly favorable overall. As you can see here, we don't have. I mean, the main thing is we don't have any westerly winds cutting across like this. The upper low is sitting now over the Gulf. And so those southwesterly winds are coming up this way, and uh, for the most part, way up here at the 100 to 250 millibar level of the atmosphere, pretty pretty high up, 
Uh, overall, the winds are you know fairly clockwise in nature, uh, for the most part. They're they're light, and that's the the big thing. And so Harvey, uh, post Harvey, whatever you want to call it, has a chance to make a comeback. That's a potent upper level low again. Uh, you got a couple of them here: the one in the Gulf, and then this one. A lot of speculation as to where these are coming from and why we're seeing them. But again, you know, it's only August 20th, uh, and today is the day when, if we look at that graph, when we really start to ramp up, and uh, then there's a little dip, and then we go up again towards mid-September. Remember? Uh, so this is it. This is kind of like, to put it in basketball terms, this would be the beginning of the Final Four, so to speak. And my, this is the way I like to look at it. And, you know, this is the weekend of the Final Four, and this is the very start. And so let's see what happens. Let's see how the teams do, so to speak, through the next few days. If you're looking at it in basketball terms, uh, that's how I look at it. And this is the beginning of that. And you never know. As with that, anything can happen. Uh, we still have a long way to go. So there's my sports analogy for Sunday. Not much of a football guy, so you're not going to hear any NFL analogies uh, unless I can come up with a good one for the uh, Patriots and the Falcons uh, debacle. But we'll leave that alone. The Euro here from the always incredible Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. I did want to point out the interesting developments here with uh, Harvey, uh, ex-Harvey, soon to be Harvey again, whatever. There's the north coast of Honduras, there's Belize and the Yucatan. And this is the vorticity of Harvey. If we put this uh, just kind of frame through, 24 hours out, boy, it moves pretty fast. In 24 hours, you got to admit, that's a heck of a jump there. Bam! Uh, and then it tries to get its act together into Belize, it looks like, maybe as a tropical storm, and then exits out over the southeast bay of Campeche. Uh, and then it looks like it slows down and really starts to intensify as it approaches maybe the Tampico area around day five. So really going to need to watch this. And any more of a trajectory to the north, well, you know, put South Texas in play. So we're going to have to watch very closely how this evolves. And you notice, too, nothing else around here uh, that really gets its act together. doesn't mean it won't happen, but the euro is not detecting that as of yet. And I want to back up just a little bit here to hour number 24. Um, 24 hours out, the euro doesn't show much in the way of any vorticity or energy spinning the atmosphere over the southeast. But remember, there is, if we go back to this, that little cluster of clouds offshore, and that's problematic because if we go to the eclipse here, uh, everything's kind of starting to be related now, and at least in some fashion. Um, the cloud cover forecast from the Weather Prediction Center, and this was generated this morning. We should have a new one coming out soon. Ugh. I mean, down here in South Carolina, the low country, where there is a lot of people, uh, are a lot of people. There are a lot of people. There is a lot of people. There are a lot of people. <laughs> and they are down there. They are mad. I, I, you know, you, you would think. Lots of planning, driving to whatever. And that's just not looking good. You know, you got to get to the upstate of South Carolina. And, you know, Tennessee looks fantastic. Uh, parts of uh, maybe the extreme southwest part of North Carolina here and the Smokies, northeast Georgia. You know, to view the partial eclipse that you'll see, you know, a good deal in North Carolina is okay. And then you can see the rest of the cloud cover up through here. Kind of problematic in the midsection of the country. But Washington uh, for the partial eclipse. Uh, and, uh, of course, Oregon for the full total eclipse through Idaho and into Wyoming, where our friends and colleagues, uh, Kerry Mallory and his, uh, his friend, our friend, all of our friends, one of the Hurricane Track supporters, a great friend of ours is what I'm trying to say. His name was Todd. Kerry and Todd drove, believe it or not, from Houston all the way up, and they're going to be in here uh, somewhere in this area for totality tomorrow. So, you know, at least we got it covered there. Um, but down here, this, this stinks because this is where I'm wanting to go. My initial idea was to go to Bulls Bay, uh, which is right here. But that looks like it could be cloudy. Now, the weather service forecast for this region is not good. Um, so I'm looking at some other ideas. Um, maybe thinking about the area here around Santee 
and the lake, uh, Lake Marion. I got an email from a family offering for my family to stay with them, which is fantastic. But are are they going to be cloudy? I mean, it's just that's tough. That's still close enough to the coast that I'm a little worried about it. But the lake can sometimes ward off cloud cover, the low cumulus deck. But if you get convective activity moving in from somewhere, you know, like from the southeast, it's not going to stop any thunderstorms. Uh, the rest of my ideas, I was thinking about the areas west of Columbia, near Batesburg, Leesville, uh, maybe even just trying to drive up 26. But I'm worried that tomorrow there's just going to be so many people uh, out there. But if we look real quick, if I can figure out, move this guy out of the way. If we look at the traffic, uh, I moved it right over traffic. Turn this on. It's not too bad right now. Uh, a little bit of congestion here on I-95, but, you know, for the supposed hordes of people, I guess it's going to happen tomorrow. The major interstates are green, and we're talking about an era of crowdsourcing traffic data like you've never seen before, and it's amazing, uh, and everything's green, you know. You know, you, you Google and Waze, I mean, they're going to be on top of it, obviously. Uh, is this going to look the same tomorrow? I don't know. I'm certainly not waiting until, you know, 9 a.m. to start leaving. I'm not that stupid. I'm a little stupid, but not that stupid, right? Uh, so I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet. But I've got, you know, some places that I could go, and we'll see what we can see. And for the rest of you trying to get out there and see the totality, it's well worth it. You may not think so now, but from what I have heard, it is well worth the effort. So go for it. If I end up in the Lake Marion area, I should have Internet access, and I'm hoping to be able to stream uh, something live. Uh, so stay tuned. I'll certainly talk about it on Twitter and in any updates I do tomorrow. Uh, if they're just quick video posts from the field, Whatever. Tomorrow's going to be kind of sketchy for video updates, so bear with me. But I'm going to try to do something, and hopefully we can go live. All right, so stay tuned. This is going to be something else. And speaking of tuned, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I'm done for now. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll see you again guaranteed somewhere in South Carolina. I'm going to see the totality one way or the other with my family, most of my family anyway. My wife has to sleep because she works nights. Uh, so she can't enjoy it with us, but she'll try again in seven years when it's over Texas and elsewhere. But we'll worry about that later. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow from South Carolina.